Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on the master budget and we will continue to the next piece being the budgeted costs of goods manufactured. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts. A must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Let's take a quick recap of where we have been so far. Once again, we had to start off and we do have to do these in order with the sales budget then the production budget, then the raw materials budget, the direct materials budget, the factory overhead budget, the selling budget, general administrative cash type accounts so that we could then make the cash budget. Now we're going to go on to the budget for cost of goods manufactured. Obviously, this seems like an awfully long process, but if we break it down to the pieces, it's really not so bad. When we look at it all as a whole, it could look quite intimidating. All right, so we're going to start off with the raw materials. Now, remember, there's three pieces to the cost of goods manufactured. What goes into our inventory process? Raw materials, labor, and overhead. So we're going to start off with the raw material. Now I'm going to start off with the raw materials inventory at the beginning of the time period. So we're going to start off with raw materials at the beginning of the time period. We're going to get that from our balance sheet up top. So if we take a look at the balance sheet, we have raw materials 98,500, 98,500. Then we're going to add to that the raw materials that were purchased. So raw materials purchased, I'm going to select tab, we're going to select equals, and we're going to go up to the raw materials budget where we have that information. So we're going to scroll up to the raw materials here. And if we go to the bottom of this item, we can see that for the quarter, we have the total purchases of the $611,474. So that's what we're going to have. That's what we purchased. Then we're going to subtract from that the raw material at the end. The raw material is still in there. Note that this is very similar to our cost of goods sold calculation for like a men for a company that sells inventory basically. So less raw material inventory at the end, ending raw material inventory. We're going to select equals. We're going to go back up to our raw materials up top. So we're looking for where we calculated the raw materials. Here it is, part number three. And you can see that here we have the ending inventory, materials purchased, materials price. Uh, here's the budgeted ending inventory, 4,000 units. So I'm going to take that 4,000, that's in units though, and we're going to multiply that times the cost per unit, which is of course this $21. That's how much the raw materials cost per unit. Therefore, we're going to come up with the 84,000, and that will give us the direct materials that will be used. So we have direct material used. I'm going to pull that out to the outside, and it's going to equal, remember, it's going to equal what we started with plus what we purchased minus the ending inventory. That's what we use. What we had plus what we purchased minus what's still there is what we have uh, used in the process of manufacturing as part of our inventory. Now included in that, we also have direct labor, which is a lot more easy uh, and straightforward. We're going to put that right in the outer column. We're not going to have to do this type of calculation in order to get that. That's why we'll put it right in the outer column. And that's going to equal, I'm going to go up to the labor budget up here where we figured out the direct labor. And we have the $425.99. That's the labor that is included in our inventory. Then we're going to have the factory overhead. Factory overhead. And that's going to have a variable portion. And a fixed portion. 
I'll just put those both in here now. Fixed portion. And we're going to go to our overhead budget. These are going to be, once again, pretty straightforward because these will be what the, the, it'll be what they are. We're not going to have to do the calculation again like this in the raw materials. We've already done that in our budget up top. So let's go up to the overhead budget. So here's our overhead. Here's the variable portion. We're going to pick up that uh, 78,000. And that's going to go into the inventory. The, the overhead that we couldn't put into a bucket is going to go into the inventory. Then we're going to have the fixed portion. That was, remember, the depreciation. So we're going to go up to the overhead, the fixed portion, 63000 And that is that. And that will give us the total factory overhead. So we're going to have total factory overhead. I'm going to select tab, tab. We're going to pull that over to the outside. We're going to sum these two numbers up. We're just adding up the 78111 and the 63000 I'm just going to sum those up like this. Sum those two items. So those added together. I'm going to indent this one more time. If you're wondering how these are indented when they're in uh, the same cell or the same column, you go up to the Home tab, you go up to this, and you indent. So we're saying this is what we're going to calculate. Here it is indented. Here it is having been calculated. We do not indent direct labor because it's already, it's just one number in the outer column. We could also underline these if we wanted to go in here and go into the Home tab, Font, Underline, and underline here, go into the home tab, font, and underline in this way as well. That'll give us our total manufacturing cost. So total manufacturing cost, I'm going to tab that all the way out to the end. And we, we actually do not like triple, you know, indent this one. We're going to bring it back to the base in this case. And we're, we're going to add up only the outer column. The column, we only add up one column at a time. So that's, of course, going to include the direct materials, the direct labor, and the factory overhead that we have calculated. So that's going to equal the sum of this direct materials direct labor and the factory overhead and enter now we don't have any work in process because this is a basically kind of a simplified problem in that we're saying that whatever we produce is we're going to produce in that time period we're not going to have anything left over in the production process we're going to start it we're going to complete it in the same time period so i'll just put in the, the work in process here just so you can see how that would be in here so here we have the working process at the beginning. Once again, we, we would get that from, of course, the, the uh, balance sheet up here, but th there is no working process. Notice we have raw materials and finished goods. It, what that indicates is that it's a very fairly quick process to manufacture, and therefore we're not caught at the end with a, with a lot of stuff that's within the processing's time. That it's basically being we start it, we complete it, and so we have zero working process. If there was working process, of course, uh, at the beginning we would have to account for that. And then we're going to say that's going to be uh, the total manufacturing cost plus what was in beginning work in process. And then we would have to take out what is still in the work in process, the stuff that's not done yet, stuff not yet in ending inventory. Once again, we're saying it's zero in this problem. There's nothing that has not been completed. We're going to complete it within the time period. So that's going to be this. It would be this minus this. So we got the um, cost of goods manufactured will then be this 1187685 uh, the next piece we want to take a look at that we'll need for the income statement is to calculate the cost of goods sold. We're going to need this number instead of having purchases as we would have if we just purchased the inventory. We have in replacing that in the calculation of cost of goods sold, this number being the cost of goods manufactured. So let's plug this into the cost of goods sold formula. We start cost of goods sold out with the beginning finished goods inventory, just like we would if we bought the inventory. Same process, although we are manufacturing in this process. Beginning finished goods inventory is going to be whatever's on the balance sheet, of course, up here. So we're going to go up to the balance sheet and we say, uh, what did we start with in finished goods inventory? This is 325,540. So 325,540 is what we have. And then we're going to add to that. What are we going to add to it? What we just calculated up here, the cost of goods manufactured. Instead of purchases, if we were in a purchasing company, we just bought and sold inventory, it would be purchases, of course. But now we had to do this whole worksheet so that we can figure out the stuff that we turned from raw material into inventory through our labor, through our overhead, and, of course, the raw materials. And then we're going to say less the ending finished goods inventory. So we have the ending finished goods inventory. What do we have still in finished goods at the end? And that's going to equal, I'm going to say equals, and we're going to go up to the production up here. And we saw our budget and we had the production. We're going to say that uh, the less, the beginning, the ending finished goods inventory is right here. So budgeted ending finished goods, but that's in units. That's in units. And remember they told us over here on this 
that we have the production cost per unit. We're going to say that per unit it costs $19.50. $19 so we're going to take the units at the end, multiply that times $19.50. And so that's what we're going to have less the ending inventory. So now we're allocating that to the, the portion that is still left over in ending inventory. Here's what we started with. Here's what we purchased. Here's, um, here's what we made, manufactured. Here's what we say is still left. So now we're going to do the calculation for the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, then, is going to equal the beginning inventory plus what we manufactured minus what's still in there. That's what we have actually sold at this time.